to essentially run high-end games off of a relatively low-powered system uh, with a uh, GPU of your choice. You can either do NVIDIA or AMD graphics inside of this thing. Um, it does, again, connect via Thunderbolt 3, and the way this is getting powered here is a 500-watt built-in power supply, which is 80-plus gold certified. Obviously, the Nook can't drive a GTX 1080, so that's how they solved the issue there. There's also a couple uh, connectivity options in the back. You do get USB 3.0 Type A and Type C. I believe there's two Type A ports and one Type C port, uh, which is always nice to see. You've got plenty of ventilation at the top here, and uh, it's just a kind of nice looking enclosure all around. You get a bit more at the front, USB 3.0 at the front as well. And I think MSI is saying that this is going to retail for around $500. That is a little bit on the steep side. However, um, it is, it is going to be offset by a cheaper unit, a cheaper system that you'd have to buy. The Intel Nook is obviously not super pricey. So um, there's, there's a bit of a give and take there. And I believe we're going to be seeing this anywhere between Q2 and Q3 of 2017. Thanks, Gus. You rock. All right, so now we're taking a look at MSI's Mystic Light app. This is an application I have not seen before, but uh, as the name might suggest, this is all about RGB control, not just for your motherboard, but for a variety of components. You can see there's quite a selection here. Um, what's actually really cool about this, apart from it being able to do, you know, the, the typical 16.8 million colors and having a variety of effects here. Actually, first off, let's take a look at that. Lighting effects, okay, that's just on and off, flashing. They've got quite a few effects here to choose from. Um, you can also, uh, do, uh, do some music uh, selection and actually have it sync to the music that you want to play. Um, color wheel right there. What I was going to say is cool about this is that it's actually compatible with certain other uh, third-party uh, components. So we've actually got, uh, if you look over the, to the system that it's connected to, that we're running off of, there's some HyperX DDR4 in this system. It's not, it's not an MSI product, it's not an MSI motherboard, but it's still able to uh, connect and, and communicate with the software in order for you to uh, pretty much change it to your heart's content. So we're going to go ahead and select green. Well, first off, we have to select uh, HyperX DIMM DDR4, just like that. And then let's just change that to green, because green is awesome. I'm going to hit apply. And if we look over here, it immediately changes to that particular effect. All right, we are now faced with a wall of motherboards. Look at all these boards. We're gonna go through all of them. Um, maybe not every single one, but I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the main ones that are that are pretty cool. First of all, they've got them organized in these different groups, uh, different tiers, if you will. You've got the enthusiast gaming series, performance. Uh, that says Arsenal. I know the light's super bright, and then the Pro series, uh, which is for professionals. Um, so we're gonna start with the enthusiast series, which is exactly what it sounds like for the hardcore gamers, like a lot of you guys are out there. So this is the. Uh, Z270 X Power Gaming Titanium. You guys are probably familiar with this uh, board, at least the Z170 version, um, which is the one I used in the silver build uh, a couple months ago for PC of the Month. Now, uh, a couple of nice additions to the Z270 uh, model, uh, which is triple M.2 slots. You get one, two, three, you can see right there. The one in the middle actually has a shroud with a thermal pad underneath for uh, better dissipation of, of heat um, for a drive. I mean, sometimes M.2 drives, if you use them quite frequently or for long periods of time, can get pretty hot, so um, that should actually help cool things down a bit. We've also got an overclocking button here. I believe this was on the, uh, the last generation uh, as well, but if you look at the back, actually it's impossible to look at the back. They're, they've got USB 3.1 Type-C. Uh, that's Gen 2, actually, so none of that uh, rebranded re USB 3.1 stuff. Uh, it's pure Gen 2. Um, you can see they're still keeping with the titanium theme. Everything looks really nice and and, and sh shimmery and stuff. Uh, why don't we go ahead and move, de move on down to our next board, which is the U270 Gaming M7. Now, you guys might recognize this board uh, from a recent video I did on the Caddy Lake launch, or Caddy Lake, Cape Tomato Tomato. Um, but uh, this is a really nice board. I've actually been enjoying it so far, working with it uh, back at home. And uh, some special things about this, other than RGB LED, of course, pretty much all over the board. Uh, you can turn these off if you so wish, because, you know, RGB LEDs aren't for everyone, of course. Uh, we've got an overclocking button at the bottom, just kind of like we saw with the titanium. There's also a USB 3.1 Gen 2 uh, motherboard header right here. It is completely built in. It's really nice. The titanium doesn't even have that. There's also a Type-C version of that on the back, also Gen 2. Again, I can't really show you that because uh, we're kind of in the corner here. But uh, overall, a very nice, clean aesthetic. We've also got uh, three M.2s uh, right here as well. So if you wanted to put in triple drives, you could also go into MSI's BIOS and do a RAID 0 setup with three of those drives for super fast storage. Worth it. And you've also got steel-plated Turbo U.2 right here on the motherboard next to your SATA ports.
fancy. And here we have the Performance Series. This is one notch down from the Enthusiast boards. Um, still very full featured and whatnot, but uh, maybe slightly more affordable as well. Uh, so right now we're looking at the Z270 Gaming Pro Carbon. And uh, you can see why it's called that. There's plenty of carbon fiber accents, both on the chipset heatsink and the VR VRM heatsink uh, and the rear I.O. shield as well. Uh, it does also support, let's see, is it three-way? Yeah, three-way, crossfire, and two-way NVIDIA SLI, which is pretty nice to see. You also get two of those Turbo M.2 slots right here with one of the shields, one shield right there. Um, it, it does have plenty of RGB LEDs on it, uh, not, maybe not quite as much as the M7, um, but still definitely enough to uh, kind of give your, your chassis and your system a nice look and feel uh, for customizability and things like that. Now look at this, the audio, the audio tracing. Audio tracing has RGB LEDs in it. That's pretty sweet. And, and even behind the board, all right, so you get kind of a nice effect on the side of the board, and the LEDs are actually right angled, pointed towards the camera right now, so they kind of uh, emit onto the chassis. They don't get completely blocked by the PCB itself. Also in the Performance Gaming Series, we have the Z270 Crate Gaming. And this is a kind of mid-range board, maybe more mainstream than some of the other enthusiast boards we just checked out. But you can see it's black and white. It's got kind of a really nice, I don't know, it's kind of like an aggressive winter theme. I'm not exactly sure how to describe it, but uh, you don't see too many white PCBs, especially with this kind of aggressive design, so that's, that's pretty interesting. I uh, get the, some branding on the side there on the IO shield, or the IO uh, cover. And if you take a look at the PCIe slots, probably the most unique thing about the board is that these are actually um, water dipped, or hydro dipped is, is what they're saying. So they use a water transfer type of technique to actually spice up the look of the PCIe slot. Of course, you wouldn't be able to see this if your graphics card was installed, but uh, most people who are only going to be having one card in here can still see the rest of uh, those slots there. And here we have pretty much the only Mini ITX board on the wall. This is the Z170i Gaming Pro Carbon. AC, as the name suggests, does come with built-in AC Wi-Fi. You can see the antennas poking out right there. Um, very nice to see. You've also got the carbon fiber accents on the VRM heatsink, as well as the chipset heatsink. And uh, it's a pretty nice board overall. I do like the fact that it's color neutral. It also has an M.2 slot. I don't see it on the front here, which means it must be on the back. So the, again, this is one of those triple threat mini ITX boards. It's got M.2, color neutral and Wi-Fi all in one little package. So that's pretty sweet. Switching gears to the Arsenal Gaming Series. This is for more of the budget-oriented gamers who doesn't want to break the bank, but still wants a nice-looking board, and potentially for some overclocking. Right here we have the Z270 Tomahawk, which kind of has a, sort of a, I don't know, like an Amazon, Amazonian theme, that's, that's the word. Uh, these things are pretty cool, actually. I like them. They look a little bit more contemporary than, you know, Transformer-ish. Um, also, you get this really like steel-looking, steel-plated uh, chipset heatsink. I believe the MSI logo does eliminate RGB, and of course, you can disable that if you so choose. And finally, in the Arsenal Gaming Series, we have the B250M mortar. Again, no overclocking done here, but this is a micro ATX board um, that uh, if you just wanted something simple, that does the job. And you've got a new Skylake CPU, preferably one that is not unlocked. Uh, that would be semi-pointless in a board like this, but uh, it does kind of have a cool aesthetic. Um, again, going with that kind of like tank tracks. I think they were saying it into like the PCB. It's supposed to look like a bunch of tank tracks just rolled over your board. Fortunately, that's that's not actually what what's happened. Otherwise, the board probably wouldn't be too functional. We do have an M.2 slot, which is pretty impressive for a for a B250M board or a B250 chipset board. Um, that is NVMe as well, so you do get some high storage or high speed storage connectivity for a board at a relatively low price point. And finally, we have our Pro Series. This is more targeted at working professionals, those who are doing content creation. You can also do some pretty heavy duty gaming with these boards. However, they're, they're not exactly tailored for that. They have really high endurance and high, very reliable components that are built in. And uh, there are three options here, with the, the bottom one here being Mini-ITX, the other two are ATX. If you were curious about the names, we've got the Z270 SLI Plus, the Z270 PC Mate, and the Mini-ITX board, which is the B205i Pro. All right, guys, so I have saved the two motherboards that I am excited for for last. So here we have two Ryzen boards. These are AM4 socketed motherboards from MSI, of course. We've got the X370 X Power Gaming Titanium over here, and then the V350 Tomahawk. Uh, so you can see here, we've got the, uh, the new socket type for AM4. Um, you are gonna need a new cooler that is compatible with the, that uh, socket, as old, like, AM3 Plus coolers and the like, FM2, it is not gonna work. 
uh, with this new with this new board type. So you could you get one, two, two, uh, two M.2 slots for fast storage and VME. Very good, nice to see. And you've also got uh, USB 3.1 type C that is gen 2 right there on the back of the motherboard and then you've also got the onboard onboard connector as well fancy that look at this little demo setup Ooh, this is a D270 got a 7700k here I believe pretty sexy on that titanium board as well triple rad uh, we're in the BIOS right now and holy smokes 5.2 gigs, yo. Uh, I asked someone at MSI how this was done and apparently it's just uh, one click of the game boost um, feature that they have in the BIOS automatically took it to 5.2 gigahertz, and uh, that's, that's that's pretty damn sweet. I'm kind of kind of bummed that my 7700K only goes to 4.9. Not fair. All right, guys, that's been concluded for my coverage of MSI here at CES 2017. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe for more stuff coming at you really soon from this event. Also, huge shout out to my sponsors for making this event possible. MSI, of course. Fractal Design and Cable Mod. Be sure to check out their stuff in the description below. Have a good one, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Bitwin's <laughs> coverage of CES 2017 is brought to you by Fractal Design, MSI, and Cable Mod. Check out the links in the description below. If you don't, I will find you. We're at the Razor booth now. It's looking pretty sharp. Get it? So we've been taken to the secret VIP back room at the Razor booth here, where they're going to be showing off this bad boy. Look at that triple panel display in a freaking GTX 1080 laptop. Are you kidding me? Do you think? Do you think if I kill everyone in this room and grab the laptop, I can make a dash for the exit? I can take him. I can definitely take him. Definitely take him. Paul, on the other hand. Yeah, yeah, I can totally take Paul. I can totally take Paul. I'll, I'll, I'll smash his head in with his own camera. <laughs> He'll like that. All right, guys, so this is Project Valerie. This is what they're calling it. Again, we're at the Razer booth, and uh, as you can see, it's a laptop with triple 4K displays, um, which is just absolute beastly. Um, now, a lot of people who were walking by, I was hearing people saying, like, oh, my God, that's so stupid, which, if you don't have any use for this, of course it is. You would never pay an arm and a leg for something this crazy. However, if you're a hardcore gamer on the go, or if you just have a really tight space, or if you happen to be, like, a workstation professional, like myself, um, and you're at an event like CES and you're editing footage constantly, this is a freaking godsend. And we've honestly, I, me personally, I've never seen anything like this before. So it's pretty exciting. There's a ton of people that are just surrounding this thing because everyone's just in awe, shock and awe, um, as myself. But uh, basically what we're dealing with here is a triple panel display that these uh, two peripheral panels actually slide uh, seamlessly in front or maybe behind uh, that front panel. So they don't actually fold out. They, they, they kind of slide, they're motorized, and they'll actually uh, fold out automatically. I think you like press a button or something, and they'll just pop out. And like you can see the bezel is really clean. You don't have to like do any manual adjusting. It's all automatic, um, which is really nice. And uh, the specs on this thing right now, this is based off of the Razer Blade Pro, uh, I believe. So we're talking the Core i7, either 6th or 7th gen. Uh, processor from Intel. And we've also got a GTX 1080 in there currently. Now, the issue that I'm seeing here, or with that, is that a 1080 probably can't push triple 4K in a lot of AAA games. So they're going to have to think of a way to solve that, either by lowering the resolution on the monitors, which I don't see happening, or adding in some SLI action. Maybe having two GTX 1080s in here, or perhaps if Nvidia ever mans up and announces the GTX 1080 Ti, maybe we could see that in this thing as well. Also, it kind of depends on when this thing comes out. If this, if, if this uh, product doesn't hit the market until next year, and there's a whole new generation of, of CPUs and GPUs, then that's what it's going to be what this is going to be spec'd out to be. As far as aesthetics are concerned, we do get some RGB lighting uh, underneath both of the side monitors, which is pretty fancy. Of course, RGB is uh, still taking off and exploding everywhere. We well, wouldn't expect much less from Razer anyway. Uh, we've also got just kind of a really nice and sleek aesthetic all around that is very reminiscent of the Razer Blade Pro. Now, actually, when this thing is all folded up and closed, um, you're actually only talking 10 to 12 pounds, maybe, which is still pretty heavy, in fact. However, there are other laptops that are 17 inches, just like this one, that are even heavier than that. So the fact that they're able to fit triple displays in that type of form factor at that weight is pretty damn impressive. They didn't mention battery life, but I would imagine it's anywhere from three to five minutes. All right, guys, really quick drop and shot, something I forgot to mention. If you look at the back of the laptop here, you can see that there's a panel on each side. 
that kind of opens up for ventilation. These panels actually open up automatically as soon as you uh, press the button to uh, pop out the side panels, the side monitors there. And obviously it's just for aesthetic design and just for looks to, to look pretty badass, quite frankly, because uh, let's be honest, monitors don't really need any additional cooling, but just thought that was something pretty cool to, to uh, show you guys. Um, they don't have a demo of that actually happening, which is just a cosmetic version. Again, we're still working on a fully functional prototype that hopefully we'll be able to see soon. Another interesting thing that Razor was mentioning is that they might release a model similar to this that only has one panel that, that pops out out of the side instead of three. And I, I think that's the one that I would go for if it ever came to fruition, uh, simply because I don't really care too much about triple display gaming. I actually prefer a single monitor, but when I'm streaming, for example, and I'm playing a game that way, it's nice to have a companion monitor for all your Discord stuff, your VoIP, Twitter, etc., Twitch. Um, also, when you're editing, um, double dual, man dual monitor display is uh, just pretty much exactly where it's at for me. So, leave your guys' thoughts in the comment section below and let me know what you think of this thing, if it's totally over the top or if you would totally buy one in a heartbeat. And also, let me know what, what kind of MSRP you might expect for from a, uh, a, a product like this. I mean, I, I guess it depends on what the internal specs eventually turn out to be, but uh, I'm sure you guys already have some ideas floating around that you want to share in the comments. Um, that's going to do it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to tune in for more tech stuff coming at you really soon from C. Yes, 2017, and a huge shout out to my sponsors, MSI, Fractal Design, and Cable Mod. Check out their stuff in the description below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Welcome back to a CNF CES tradition. It's our coolest laptops of the show chat show where we get the best stuff from CES, line them all up and talk about laptops and tablets and hybrids. I'm very excited this year to be joined by Xiomara Blanco and Josh Goldman. Uh, we got three people and a lot of laptops to talk about. Uh, let's just jump right into it. I think one of my favorite things I saw was a Chromebook. And Chromebooks can be kind of boring sometimes. This is the new uh, Samsung Chromebook Pro and or Plus. They have two versions, the Pro and the Plus. And they actually look identical. It's a kind of a higher end version of a Chromebook because it's got a touch screen and a metal body and a 360 degree hinge. And the difference between the Pro and the Plus is uh, one has an Intel processor, one has an ARM processor, which is interesting because you don't see that outside of a couple of Chromebooks in, in the laptop field. Uh, and I like that um, it'll run Android apps from the Google Play Store because it's built around that. And I feel like Chromebooks are kind of limited. You know, the people feel like they're, they're kind of the boring low-end laptop and people are now making higher-end ones. And I think adding Android apps makes up for the fact that you can't, you know, run other stuff. But I think price is a pretty important category. I don't know how much of these yeah. can be. This is like foreign change uh, for the ARM version. The Intel version might be a little bit more. So you're yeah. getting up to kind of that premium price there. I will show you one bonus you get here. You tilt it for me and then you click right here and you get a stylus. Wow. And that works on the screen. It works with Google Keep and things like that. So that's probably the coolest Chromebook I've seen here. Have there uh, been any other Chromebooks here? There are a handful, but I don't think anybody has like this kind of set of, of features. And I know that uh, ZMR really like this guy. What is this? Yeah, this is the Asus ZenBook uh, 3 Deluxe. And I really like it. I use a MacBook Air for work, but this feels just like it. It's super light. It has uh, three USB-C ports two which work as a Thunderbolt ports, um, and I just really like the way it looks. I think it's super cool and sleek. Um, it's really got the aesthetics down. Good. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I got a little bit of a mic adjustment there. Um, yeah, no, it's great. Um, and then the other thing about it, right, is the, uh, the screen, right? Right. It's got, it's a 13-inch laptop with a 14-inch screen, yep. which sounds impossible, but it's really not. Yeah, and that compares well with the ThinkPad, right? Uh, that's so true, that's ThinkPad true. Over there. Lenovo always brings a ton of laptops here, and this is one of our favorites. It's the ThinkPad X1 Carbon, is that it? Right, um, two and a half pounds, uh, just over a half inch thick. Um, mainly made for business, but we like them uh, they do so much. Crossover that, stuff yeah, there. You, know, you can get crossover. their business stuff and use them just as a regular home laptop. Right. They're some of the best ones, really. And this one, too, has the almost no bezel on it, so you get the full. 14-inch display in a tiny 13-inch body. It's like body. the XPS uh, 13 line does the same yeah. thing with the thin bezel. Um, and then we, uh, uh, it also, uh, Windows Hello, it seems oh. to be big this year, right? Windows Hello, the uh, IR camera, so you just have right to, in. right, so um, very secure. And this has uh, mobile broadband too, if you are traveling around. Very cool. A little bit bigger, 
in the in the hybrid space, you usually don't see a big hybrid like this with a 15-inch screen. It's the HP Spectre X360 15-inch edition, and when you go like this, uh, you know, it gives you a nice kind of portable, almost TV screen quality to it. And the difference between this one and last year, if I'll fold it down to a, a tablet shape for you, is they actually made it a little bit thicker than the previous version of this, and that's because they added a much bigger battery. And I feel like uh, you know people are struggling to make the you know racing to make the thinnest laptops possible. But I will trade a little bit of that for some better features, some better battery life, and I think that's a, that, that's a smart trade-off here. And you don't see too many 15-inch hybrids, so I always like to read cool stuff like this. Yeah. Um, integrated graphics in this one? Or? Uh, there is there is an option where you can get um, an NVIDIA GPU, but not like oh, a super gamery one. I think it might go up to a, nine, a 940. But if you want something a little better with graphics, um, this is my little Dark Horse favorite laptop of the show. This is, uh, it's not an Alienware, it's a Dell Inspiron. It's the Inspiron 15 7000. And they had one of these last year too that had an, an NVIDIA 960 GPU in it for like 800 bucks, and that was a really good deal. Well, now they've updated it. It's got a little bit of kind of gamery flair to it. It's got some like red highlights and cool vents and stuff, and it's got the, the backlit red keys, um, and they've got the NVIDIA 1050 card in it, which is NVIDIA's new card. You know, it's, it's a mainstream slash budget graphics card, but it's perfectly fine for, for regular games, and this guy, 799 it's tough to get more gaming laptop for 800 bucks than this. Right, um, and Acer has a similar model, also scoring the 1050 mm -hmm. um, and about the same price. So. And Lenovo has their new Legion that does the same thing, and Samsung has the Odyssey that also does the same thing. They're yeah, all so like seven, eight, nine hundred dollars with that 1050 or the 1050 Ti. But if that's not enough, <laughs> the Amari, I want you to tell me about this gigantic gaming laptop here that's a little bit more expensive. <laughs> Uh, just a little bit, starting at $9,000, this can be all yours. If you've ever wanted a, a gaming laptop that's more of a computer than a laptop, unless you want this heavy thing on your lap, it weighs about 20 pounds. Um, it's a pretty incredible machine. Like, I'm not going to pull out my back or anything, but it's huge. And it's got a curved screen, 21 inches, uh, a trackpad that you can take off and use as a number pad. Uh, five cooling fans. I mean, I could list the specs, but I'd be here all day. And the big mechanical keyboard, like the kind you only see on like standalone desktop keyboards, which is just crazy. Uh, yeah, this thing is massive. So you're taking that on the plane on the way home, right? Oh yeah, it's coming home with me for sure. You might need the extra leg room seat for that. <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna say. Is this the one that has two power supplies? Yes, yes it does right, have two power right, supplies because right. I plugged it in. I had to hunt around backstage to find two <laughs> outlets next to each other to plug it in. And this is actually actually coming out, you know, yeah. this is a almost ready to release product, yeah. and they'll be selling this in, in stores if you have $9,000 and really want a really cool gaming laptop. A little bit further out is this guy, one of the cool concept pieces here at the show. Razer always brings a couple of cool concept PCs, prototypes. Uh, this year, this is one of the most popular things here. It's called Project Valerie, and it's a 17-inch gaming laptop based on one of their you know, current models, but the lid is really thick because inside there are two extra screens. And, and, and in, in the final version, you'd press a button or use a software command, and the extra screens would come out from either side and arrange themselves, and then you have a triple screen laptop, which I know I've never seen before. I really no, I don't remember ever seeing a triple screen laptop. It's probably why they're crowded around it out there on the floor. That's true. They have it under glass, and like you can't get close to this thing because everyone's always always crowding around trying to look at it. And it's got an NVIDIA uh, 1080 card in it, which is the desktop slash laptop, you know, pretty much top of the line right now. And those are, I think, three 17-inch uh, UHD displays. Uh, so that's a lot of pixels, and I actually played Battlefield 1 on there for a little bit. You know, it ran perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. um, did they mention the likelihood of December coming out? Or? You know, like a lot of these concept pieces, <laughs> you never know what's actually uh, going to happen, but they do have it up and running, which, which I appreciate in a concept piece, and they have, as a, a, as a mirror to that, they have Project Ariana, which is the big uh, in-room projector that then sends you know, game images and lighting effects all around you. And we talked about all this big expensive stuff. I want to whip out one last little thing here I have in my pocket to give you something a little more budget-minded. <laughs> this is the Lenovo 500 multimedia controller, and it solves a problem that DMR and I were talking about. What do you do if you have a computer in your living room and you want to control it, it's hooked up to your TV? Like, what do you do right now? I mean, I have a Bluetooth keyboard that's about this big, and it's fine, but if I could use that instead, why so not? It's, a little, it's almost like a BlackBerry-style keyboard, and you can see it's got, it's got the, the QWERTY keyboard, but there's no touchpad, and that's because if you just 
run your fingers over the keys without pressing them down, that's the touchpad. And I tried it out, one finger work, two finger for scrolling work. If you tap once like this, that's a left click. If you tap with two fingers, that's a right click. And you know what? I, I was dubious. I tried it out. I was like, this actually works kind of good. And this is, I think, a cooler solution than the giant laptop with the touchpad attached I keep on my lap when I'm trying to like, you know, get the stuff on my on my home theater PC I have hooked up to the TV. And I think it's going to be like 55 bucks. I'd buy that. Yeah, right? Cool. Well, this is some of the uh, coolest laptops and, and tablets and big gaming machines and accessories we've seen uh, here at the show. And the nice thing is most of these you'll be able to go out and, and buy this year. Yeah. yeah. I love how they range in practicality. Like, this is practical for a completely different person <laughs> than what this is practical for. <laughs> and we've gone from like $400 to $9,000 to who knows how much. All right, well, thank you, Josh Goldman. Sure. Thank you, Giamara Blanco. Thank you, And Dan thank Ackerman. you for watching our coolest laptop of the show at CES. And then coming up at the top of the hour, we're going to join Brian Tong live from the show floor with his backpack. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the CNET stage at CES 2017. I'm Brian Tong, and with me is the handsome David Katzmeyer. Have you been introduced like that before? Always. Okay, well, I insist on part of my contract. They, they wrote that in the actual contract. He is uh, reviews TVs and, among other things, has obviously been super busy this entire week. And what we're here for, we're talking TV shows, and really, we want to talk about what you love. You and I exchange, basically sat in a booth for two hours and talked about exactly this, so they're like, hey, why don't we just put these two guys in? Talk about the same exact thing. Yeah, 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 the Sony booth, it's just crawling with new TV technology. We were there, you know, shooting videos, making, uh, making it happen on the opening day, but that was fun. Now, the day one, the keynote, I felt like LG basically threw down the hammer and was like, you know what? CS 2017, first keynote, boom. This is the most sensational product you might see here at the show. Talk to us about it and what makes at least that special and why maybe we should care. So this is the wallpaper television we're talking about. It's the W7. It's their first uh, TV that is 3.5, no, 3.8 millimeters thin, so like about that thin. And that you put that up on the wall and it basically blends completely in the wall. You can see the video here. The coolest part about this, like I've been reviewing TVs for a while. And I'm always like, oh, another thin TV. Oh, what, what are you <laughs> going to do? It's like, OK, fine. It's a thin TV. But you, you put them on the wall, they're like that. You know, they're, they're, they're sticking out a little bit. This, once it's completely part of the wall, it kind of blew my mind. Now, I had seen this thing on a trip to Korea a couple years ago in concept form. Guy hands me this sheet, basically, like a thing of cellophane, black thing, like flopping around. And he's like, we're going to make this into a television. And I'm holding it like, what are you going to do? There's like this ribbon dangling from the bottom <laughs> of it. How do you plug anything into it? So what they did is they just basically created the sound bar, you know, that, that got all the, the HDMI and everything connected to it. There's a little ribbon cable that runs up. You can see right there, runs up through the wall. And that supplies the power and the HDMI. So they solved that problem. Of course, you have to use the sound bar. Um, you know, it's an $8,000 television. Actually, they, they just, the pricing just kind of leaked on Best Buy. So. LG wouldn't tell us until now. We went, you know, did a little Google search, found out that thing is actually available for pre-order now for the 65-inch wow. size, eight grand. Oh, it's eight grand. See, yes. I w we were we were trying to guess. Uh, is it going to be like maybe ten grand somewhere mm -hmm. around there? So eight grand is what yep. they're going to start yep. it off. So now it's it's eight thousand. That means their other OLEDs, which by the way have the best picture quality we ever tested, and by the way. yeah, amazing televisions. Those guys, they have four of them this year. Step down series. Those are going to be progressively less expensive. My hope is that the cheapest one, which LG says has the exact same picture quality as all the more expensive ones, meaning you know that's the one you want to buy. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that things like maybe 2,500 for 65 inch come holiday season, that's, that's maybe two crazy. grand if we get really lucky. So 